Hello, good morning everyone. It's time for us to get ready for some kitchen shenanigans. Yeah, you got it. Wednesday I went to the food bank and I uh, haven't taken care of the produce in my kitchen today. So that's what we're going to tackle today. Yesterday I had a little fun. I saw a little, you know, pimples going. I don't know what was going on my cheeks and stuff. So I took care of that. Feeling better today. Had a lot of things going on yesterday, but today we're going to get busy on the produce that I had from the food bank this week and get it preserved up before it goes bad. Now, the very first thing that I want to tackle is that big watermelon that I got. Well, it's already taken care of. I took care of that on Wednesday. Um, and the reason is because off camera, <laughs> I didn't have the camera on. Um, the watermelon busted in the sink where it was sitting and so that's how ripe that watermelon was is that it just cracked open and I'm going to tell you that while I was at the food bank I saw at least one watermelon on the ground outside where it theirs had popped open as well and so the birds were enjoying that watermelon out at the food bank so let's get in here and let's preserve these um this produce from this week's um food bank haul all right so i'm gonna bring you around i'm gonna pull out here like this and i'm gonna move you over into my kitchen pop this down And move you over here and try real hard not to get in front of the camera as we're doing this but you can see that the lettuce is here and that's what we're going to be dealing with we're going to be dealing with the lettuce and let's see what else we can throw into throw into this okay so Yeah, just excuse me, okay? I'm moving y'all around, and I am going to be passing in front of this, but I'm going to try to get... Let's just get it done. Let's just get her done, all right? Okay, so... Jalapenos. We got jalapenos. We got... We had three tomatoes. One of them was squashed. The other one was very, very ripe when I got it too ripe and and by today it's here i got it right here but this is really squashy and so i'm going to toss this one out and let the birds in my neighborhood enjoy this tomato outside we have some bell peppers that have seen better days but are still good and then we have these lemons Okay. And so that was the produce that I got. Plus we got a watermelon. And so that was the produce that we got this week. And so I'm going to create something using um, this produce so we can get it used up in a usable form. The very first thing I'm going to do is, yeah, you can guess it. I'm going to unbag this lettuce. We're going to take a look at it and we're going to wash it. And I'm going to pull you over to my sink to do this. All right, so here we go. Don't mind my uh, kitchen towel, it is clean. I'll put it over here to dry off. And now we're gonna get into this lettuce and see what it looks like. And yes, right underneath my feet, when I'm in the kitchen with kitchen shenanigans, you know who's underneath my feet. I have introduced you to my, to my companion. So it's been my companion for 11 years now, 11, yeah, I think it's 11 years now. All right, so here's the lettuce. And I do see, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this bag and do this with it. I'm gonna put that tomato in there that's not any good. And this is gonna be my bag that's gonna go outside for the, for the birds in my neighborhood. I don't wanna track, that's the thing, is that I don't wanna track other things but you can see that 
This lettuce has seen its better days, but it's not all bad. Not all bad. So I'm going to pull what is not bad. And set it off to the side there. My kitchen sink is clean, by the way. All right, so. And I'm going to pull off the, the stuff that's not too good. But. this is what I'm gonna do see I never know how I'm gonna tackle it until I get into it and see what is exactly going on I'm just gonna do this first okay and that way see we got this whole section here I'm gonna pull that off people I grew up on a farm this kind of produce you know this happened on the farm all the time, people. It's like we looked over our produce. We didn't expect it to be perfect. What you guys get in the grocery store is the perfection of what's actually out on the farm. You get the best of the best at the grocery store. But when you're growing your own produce and you're growing your own stuff, what you see in the grocery store is kind of the fantasy of what you see at the farm, on a farm. And so, should I throw this whole thing away or should I try to save more? That's the question. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to see, you know what, I can save some more on this, okay? I have discovered I can. So I'm going to pull these leaves off. <coughs> Yep, you can hear my dog. He has heard something outside. I don't know what. And then, keep pulling until I see. And look at this. Give me a second. Alright people, I want y'all to see my dog at his best. I don't know how many of you guys have these things that kind of, you know, just appear every once in a while in your house. But it is a one of those very large, like flying roaches that every once in a while appears in my house and I am deathly afraid of them. Like, I scream like a crazy mad woman when these uh, appear. And my dog, with his so alertness, and has been trained to identify them in the house before I even know that they're in the house and take care of them before I even know. When you heard me say, give me a minute, and I turned the camera off, that's because my dog had alerted me that he had found one of them. And yes, people, that is why I keep that fly swatter right there handy. Is because when these things make their way into my house, my dog kills it for me. Before I even know it's there. And then I take the fly swatter and deal with it. Yep, so that's what's going on right now in my house. All right, we're working with this lettuce again. We're back. But before that happens, I am going to treat my dog for taking care of that before I even was knew it was in the house. You're such a good boy. So he's getting a home canned carrot for his troubles. As a treat, you were a good boy. Thank you for alerting me of that. And now we're back to this lettuce. So now I have removed everything. And I'm going to do a cut just like this. And I'm going to investigate the rest of this. Taking anything out. And now I'm going to wash this up. 
Remember that strainer that I had yesterday? Well, let me get that out. What can I do with that? All right. And we're going to take this lettuce, rinse it off real good. Spread it out. We're going to check those leaves as I wash them. Remember that strainer that I keep right here? Well, that, that's the reason right there. That's the reason I keep it there. Okay. And so, we're just going to check these leaves as I wash them off. And then I got my bag here full of things that are, and I'm going to set that right over there and let it drain. All right. And I say right over there, y'all probably don't see. I'm, a, I'm setting it on this, uh, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you guys. See this chopper? The thing that I respect the most because it I ended up in the hospital over this thing. Okay. Eat some spice. Let me just get out of the way so I don't step on you, boy. I just wanted you to know that um, if you hear me talking, I don't want to step on you, that kind of stuff. I want you to know I'm talking to my dog. That's why I introduced you to my dog, because he's under my feet all the time here in the kitchen, which is fine. He's my companion. He keeps me on my toes. And let me see. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, you can see it. I'm putting it over there. You saw me clear everything else off. I'm going to finish clearing that off, and then I'm going to put that lettuce on top of that towel, and we're going to drain it. Now, this isn't a towel. It's actually a, a dish. It's a dish drainer that my mom made. One of the last things that my mom did for me before she passed away is make these dish drainers for me, and I have several of them. And... Uh, I use them to drain dishes. I use them, and I keep them washed up. I to drain dishes to, I prefer them over a dish drain. I have a dish drain. All right, I did. I don't anymore. I took it and threw it in the trash because it was in the way. But um, I had a dish drain and uh, put it in the same spot, but I prefer those because those I can just kind of, how do you put it? I can just kind of take those and throw them in the washer and wash them just along with my clothes and stuff like that and put a new one out. That's why I like them. Um, and I use dishwash. I don't use sponges. I use dish, uh, what do you call them? I, I use dishcloths, okay? No, that's not what you call them. I use these, okay? And the reason I use these is because they're simple and easy for me to hand wash in the sink. Every day, I hand wash this thing and then make sure it's clean. I, I wash it by hand using antibacterial soaps that I keep. That's why I keep these soaps up here for several reasons. But one of the reasons is I hand wash some of my stuff. And one of the things that I hand wash is this dish 
dish rag, dish rag, that's what they call it. All right, so we got that. Now I'm going to bring over here my salad bowl. Well, that is draining. I'm gonna put my salad bowl here for you. And I always put the lid with the bowl so it's easy for me to remember. And then, ah, let me get out, let me get out my chopping. My mini chopping. Mini chopping board, that's all I need right now. Y'all, I'm getting serious, this is my coffee pot, got my coffee cup right here. Oh, oh lordy. I had me one of those breakfast sandwiches that I thank myself for, my future self for. And then that's what I have for breakfast. I've already taken the dog out fed him, taking him out for a second time. Now I'm getting ready for some more shenanigans in the kitchen. All right, so that one tomato. you to move out of the way and look I'm showing you so I'm gonna take this tomato cut the bad part off and do the same thing with this one now um I mentioned the other day that I didn't get, you know, like any meat this week in my grocery haul. And uh, I had a commenter say that that happens with them quite frequently. And uh, I didn't want y'all to think that I was complaining because I certainly wasn't. It just surprised me because in all the years that I have been going to this food bank, you have to understand what I did before I started going for myself. I worked with the seniors during COVID in my area and one of the things is that I could take, I could help them not only get safe food to their apartments, but save them money in the process because my seniors were 60 years old and older that qualified for the food bank and so I would go in to the food bank and pick up for them. And, uh, and deliver their, their food to them for about two years before I retired last year. And so, yeah, I've been going to this food bank for two years, three years, and two of them was for the seniors that lived in my area. I was picking up for them. And so yesterday was the first time I didn't get meat. And... That's why I was, I mean, Wednesday was the first time I didn't get meat, and that's why I was surprised, okay? And that's why I did say that they probably forgot to put it in there, because I did see the meat in other people's uh, uh, grocery haul. What I didn't see was in mine, and that's fine, okay? I am not complaining, okay? I was just surprised, okay? <laughs> I wanted y'all to know that typically in the grocery hauls that I get, we get some kind of meat protein that is not canned, frozen. We typically do. All right, so in my salad, I'm going to put tomatoes. I'm going to put that lettuce from the, from the pantry. I 
don't like bell pepper in my salad. I love bell pepper cooking with it, but I don't like it in my salad. So the bell pepper is going to go into, where's my bag of peppers? Into my mild pepper bag from the freezer. So I'm gonna get this out. But I'm also, let me look and see if I can find the jalapenos. The jalapeno bag is somewhere in here. Let me find it. This is my bag of jalapenos that I've been collecting. And so we're going to get these done and we're going to get these what I call mild peppers. It's a, a range of bell peppers, sweet banana peppers, and other kinds of peppers out of my garden. And uh, I'm throwing those in there because I do not, I typically do not can during the winter. I mean, during the summer, listen to me. <laughs> I don't can during the summer. And the reason I don't can during the summer is just, people, it's just too hot, okay? It's just too hot. And so all I do is cut the stem off of it and into the bag it goes. Okay, into the bag it goes. And these jalapenos I'm collecting from the food bank is for a project that I am working on. And that project is tomatillo sauce. I'm gonna make salsa verde for, um, for my enchiladas and enough for a year. And how do you tell, Susie, that you've made enough for the year? Here is what I do. Because typically I tell my brain, you need 12 jars because you're by yourself and so if you make it once a month you need 12 jars so my tomatillos sauce is going to i'm going to make 12 at least 12 jars if not more 12 let me correct that let me make that real clear 12 pints okay and I'm gonna make 12 pints of it. And so, Lord, I made a mess here. That's okay. That's what it's all about, making messes in the kitchen. The more messes you make, the more delicious food you make. And so, All right, so here we go with that. Okay, here we go. Now, we're gonna take these, oh, look at that, I just cleaned that off. All right. We're gonna take these two peppers and we're gonna dice them up. We're gonna throw them in my bag that I keep in my freezer. This white stuff, by the way, I always try to take this white stuff out of here because 
sometimes it can cause the pepper to be bitter. And so taking out, taking those things out of your peppers Now, here's the thing. If you like peppers in your salad, if you like bell peppers in your salad, then legit you could take these bell peppers and toss them into your salad. But I don't like bell peppers in my salad. And so I typically don't put them in there, but it doesn't mean I can't use them. It just means I don't like them in my salad. I don't like them raw. I like my bell peppers cooked. All right. So, I have gotten out of the shenanigans I'm doing today. My goal was to get all the produce put into either a form that I'm going to use it for the rest of the week or preserve it, one or the other. And so, so far, out of the three tomatoes that I got, two of them were not good, but I got a good one out of it. So I, I'm happy with that. We got two bell peppers. We got a huge watermelon. That was seedless, by the way. When I when it popped open, it was seedless. Okay. okay, I'm being real careful. To stay away from that seed pod. Now I've had people ask me. Can you save the seeds from the bell peppers that you get from the store and plant them? And my answer to this is, yes, you can. The question is, will they produce peppers? That's the real question. And I can tell you from experience that it's a hit and miss, okay? Sometimes they do grow and they don't produce peppers. And sometimes they grow and they produce an abundance of peppers. So it is hit and miss with these seeds because we don't know how they, what they've done with them, with these seeds in the process between the plant and the store. And so now another question that I have gotten from people is um hey susie why don't you like slice your peppers up and use them for like fajitas and uh, i'll tell you that for myself you can do that your kitchen your rules but for myself i tend i've done that before but i tend to not use them believe it or not <laughs> and so And so I chop mine up, and if I make fajitas, then I use the chopped peppers. Did I put, I certainly did, I caught myself there. All right, so here we go. I got the peppers chopped up. I got the jalapenos in a form 
that is going in the freezer for a future project. to the freezer. And that's done. And I'm going to wash my hands. You're saying, Susie, all you have in your salad right now is tomatoes and uh, lettuce. Well, guys, does this make a salad? It does. Yes, people, it makes a salad. It does. And so, I am going to get in here and kind of chop these up into bite-sized pieces. Just like this. And create my lettuce and tomato salad. Yeah. The things that I'm going to add as I go might be, you know, I might boil an egg and then slice it up and put it on top. I have used up all the olives out of my refrigerator that needed to get used up. So that's not in there anymore. Um, I do have black olives in my pantry that I could throw in here. I could do that. Another thing that I'm probably gonna add to this is I have grated cheese in the refrigerator and as I make my little salad bowls, I might top it off with a little grated cheese. And, oh, by the way, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll top it off with a little grated cheese and a boil an egg and slice it up and put it in here. And then these, remember those walnuts that I got from the food bank? Well, we get those on a regular basis here. And I, what I do is I take them and put them in my little chopper my ninja chopper and chop them up and I spread them on top of my salad. And so that's a salad topper that I keep. Instead of croutons, I use nuts on my salad. And so this is the shenanigans that I'm getting to in my house today. And uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of rest in the afternoon to rest up because um, yeah, I. Yeah, I, I worked hard in my house yesterday. <laughs> I, got, I got busy yesterday in my house and got a lot done. But this is my salad. You saw me do the peppers, both peppers. You saw me make something out of the produce that I got from the food bank that would otherwise end up in a landfill or thrown away or given to you farm animals, um, I took it and made something for myself out of it. Now, another thing that I want to let everybody know is that the heat in Texas is real, people. My thermos thermometer outside is reading 108 right now outside and 78 inside. And the reason it's 78 inside is because, I'm going to be honest with you, if I make my house at 70 degrees inside, the electric bill will be so high, it will double just to try to keep the house cool to a 70 degrees. Another reason is because 
it will just kill my air conditioner to be running constantly like that. So I get it to a comfortable degrees for myself, which is around between 75 and 80 degrees. I'm not sweating. I drink enough fluids throughout the day to keep myself hydrated and I'm, I'm okay between 75 and 80 degrees inside the house. It's when it reaches 80 degrees or above is when I like, it's too hot, okay? So guys, I wanna thank you for coming along to be with me today. God bless you guys and uh, I'll see you on the next video.